wealth can wane, kinfolk of influence shall die. Someday you too might die. But I know one thing that'll never die. And that's the honor of somebody who's earned his draft at some point. Come closer and let an old skilled tell the story of one such person. This is Heroes of Our Folk. And now I'd like to do a reading from the Heimskringla, chapters 65 and 83. Chapter 65, Rumsdal and Fjord districts are baptized. The same harvest King Olaf summoned to the bonds to a thing of the four districts at Dragseed in Stad. And there the people from Son, the fjord districts, Southmoor, Ramsdal, were summoned to meet. King Olaf came there with a great many people who had followed him from the eastward, and also with those who had joined him from Rogaland and Hordaland. When the king came to the thing, he proposed to them there, as elsewhere, Christianity. And as the king had such a powerful host with him, they were frightened. The king offered them two conditions, either to accept Christianity or to fight. But the bonds saw they were in no condition to fight the king, and resolved, therefore, that all the people should agree to be baptized. The king proceeded afterwards to North Moor and baptized all that district. He then sailed to Hladr in Throndheim and had the temple there rise to the ground, took all of the ornaments and all of the property out of the temple and from the gods in it, and among other things, the great gold ring which Earl Hakon had ordered to be made and which hung in the door of the temple and then had the temple burnt. But when the bonds heard of this, they sent out a war arrow as a token through the whole district, ordering a warlike force, and intended to meet the king with it. In the meantime, King Olaf sailed with a war force out of the fjord, along the coast northward, intending to proceed to Halogaland, and baptize there. When he came north to Bjarnar, he heard from Hlogaland that a force was assembled there to defend the country against the king. The chiefs of this force were Herak of Fjota and Thor Hjort from Vagar and Ivan Kinifra. Now when King Olaf heard this, he turned about and sailed southwards along the land. And we got south of Stad, proceeded at his leisure, and came early in winter, A.D. 998, all the way to Viken. Now I'm going to skip a few chapters, and I'm going to go to chapter 83. Chapter 83, Ivan Knifthra's death. Herak of Thotta went away from the town as fast he could, but Hawk and Sigurd remained in the king's house, and both took baptism. Herak pursued his voyage until he came to Theata. He sent immediately a message to his friend Ivan Kinefra with the word that he had been with King Olaf, but would not let himself be cowed down to accept Christianity. The message at the same time informed him that King Olaf intended coming to the north in the summer against them, and they must be at their post to defend themselves. It also begged Ivan to come and visit him, the sooner the better. When this message was delivered to Ivan, he saw how very necessary it was to devise some counsel to avoid falling in the king's hands. He set out, therefore, in a light vessel with a few hands as fast as he could. When he came to Theata, he was received by Herrick in the most friendly way, and they immediately entered into conversation with each other behind the house. When they had spoken together but a short time, King Olaf's men had secretly followed Herrick to the north, came up and took Ivan prisoner, and carried him away to their ship. 
They did not halt on their voyage until they had came to Throndheim and presented themselves to King Olaf at Nidaros. Then Ivind was brought up to a conference with the king, who asked him to allow himself to be baptized like the other people. But Ivind decided, decidedly answered that he would not. The king still, with pervasive words, urged him to accept Christianity, and both he and the bishop used many suitable arguments. But Ivan would not allow himself to be moved. The king offered gifts and great fiefs, but Ivan refused all. Then the king threatened him with tortures and death, but Ivan was steadfast. Then the king ordered a pan of glowing coals to be placed upon Ivan's belly, which bust burst asunder. Ivan cried, Take away the pan, and I will say something before I die, which also was done. The king said, Wilt thou now, Ivan, believe in Christ? No, said Ivan. I can take no baptism, for I am an evil spirit put into man's body by the sorcery of Finns, because in no other way could my father and mother have a child? With that, Ivan, who had been one of the greatest sorcerers, had died. I kind of expect the last line was embellished for the sake of the church. Can you imagine what it would be like to have someone force their beliefs on you? In parts of our world, that still happens. I'm fortunate enough to live somewhere where I can make my own choices, including the choice to say no when threatened with baptism. Hail to Ivan Knifra. Hail to the folk. Hail to you, and thank you for listening. This is Heroes of Our Folk.